Ned is one of the earliest works of Rob Four, the founder of Razoric.com, who many of you may remember most famously for their Mario vs. Sonic cartoons and other collaborations with video game directors Kathor, VGDC. The Ned series, or rather, the epic story of Ned and his quest to save the universe, is yet another overlooked masterpiece that has been shunned for its technical quality when there's that much more meaning just below the surface. Ned is ridden off for being a poor Flash, when it should be heralded for championing itself as a piece of art with the nihilist cause. Ned's circumstance as a victim of attempted murder for trying to purchase some peanuts might seem crude, random humour, when it is in fact the very basis for this Flash. In this instance, Ned's life is being used as a synonym of being of equal or lesser value to Peanuts, and since Peanuts are usually used to represent a small or insignificant figure, we can take this to mean that Four is suggesting that Ned's life, or perhaps life itself, is an insignificant thing, and therefore all things are insignificant. To the shopkeep, an absence of Peanuts means an absence of life. Ned finds these new views that have been thrust upon him difficult to accept, and it's only by mentioning of Peanuts that his murderous rages begin. Note the significance of Ned's animalistic-like savagery of merely tearing the woman's face off with his bare hands and exclaiming that he will destroy the planet. I must remind the viewer that the title of the piece is The Epic Story of Ned and His Quest to Save the Universe. Perhaps for is suggesting that life, being a meaningless concept, can only be given significance through the means of its end, and therefore humanity can only be saved via its destruction. This second episode focuses on Ned's slow acceptance of his newfound beliefs. You can clearly see that Ned is being depicted as an everyman that we can relate to. His speech patterns are shown to be simple and within reason of what we would expect an ordinary man to speak like, and with the introduction of the lost child, he instantly becomes emotive as any of us would be expected to do. However, notice that the world that Ned is inhabiting is composed almost entirely of gradients and the line tool. It's perfectly ordered. When Ned is encountered by the child and the dog, the sense of childlike freedom and animalistic tendencies that lie within each of us, both of whom are drawn freehand by four, Ned's trigger is set off. Once Ned begins to realize that a sense of chaos is allowed to exist in his world, he embraces it and becomes one with it. This third episode is the last of the original trilogy, although not the end of the Ned series, I'll be stopping here. Curiously, given the title, I had expected this episode to focus on man's capitalist dependencies, but it turned out not to be the case. Here we see Ned travelling in his car, clearly racked with guilt and confusion over his previous actions. Much like many tragedies of the past, Ned is confronted by the source of what will ultimately be his downfall, an embodiment of lust. Once again, Ned finds himself triggered and submerges himself in chaos, no longer allowing himself to be limited by a sense of self or specific form, giving birth to his shape-changing abilities. In realizing the meaningness of everything, Ned has allowed himself to take control of everything, and his first target is the very source of all life. Before his demise, Ned does us, the viewer, a gift of showing us what lies beneath the surface of the policeman, a figure who we, the general public, generally rely upon to keep order and look after us. By exposing the deliberately poorly drawn and malformed skull, 
Ned has shown us that even those we look up to to keep us safe and govern our lives can have something dark and twisted beneath the surface. Ned's death is something he simply resigns himself to and accepts, allowing himself to occupy the very center of chaos in effect, an explosion.